1993, some miners in the Duzlikov salt mine in the Zanjan province in Iran came upon an extraordinary find. They found a mummified head in the middle of a tunnel around 45 meters in length. The head of the mummy was in good condition, to the point his ear was still pierced with a gold earring. They even found his leather boot, which still held parts of his leg and foot. These amazing discoveries led to a proper excavation of the site from the Zanjin Cultural Heritage, Handicrafts, and Tourism Organization. What they found was three iron knives, some pottery shards, patterned textile fragments, broken bones, a pair of short wool trousers, a sling, a leather rope, a grindstone, a needle made of silver, and a walnut. At the time, researchers thought this find was a one-time deal and stopped excavating. Of course, that wasn't the case, as in 2004, a second mummy was found only 50 feet away from the first by some miners. Again, the local branch of the Zanjan researchers came back to the scene. They realized they may have found an ancient mine that was used throughout different periods of history, and they weren't wrong. The remains of the second mummy were found by researchers. Along with it was a large assortment of artifacts made from metal, wood, clothing, and pottery. They knew the excavations would be a big project to take on, so they reached out to multiple universities around the world, such as York and Oxford. In 2005, a series of excavations took place, and a total of eight mummies were found. It was once thought to be six mummies, but some body parts did not fit with the discovered mummies, meaning there are more bodies to be found. What made these mummies so different from, let's say, Egyptian mummies, was the mummification process was not man-made. It was natural. The salt from the mine preserved the flesh, bone, and hair, and some of the mummies still had intact stomachs and colons. This process led to the mummies being discovered thousands of years later. Now for the part you all been waiting for. Let's look at five of the salt mummies. The most preserved are numbers one and four. Let's start with mummy number one. Research found that the mummy was around the age of 35 to 40 years old before he died, and is dated to the height of the Sassanian Empire which is around 1,700 years ago. Researchers have even managed to find out the mummy had a blood type of B positive. The gold earring and clothing, along with his leather boot, paint a clear picture on what he was like in life. His attire shows us he was a man of class, which makes you wonder why he was in the mine in the first place. That being said, 3D imaging on his skull found that there were fractures around his eye and other areas that happened before his death. This would indicate a violent blow to the head. Having said that, it is possible he was murdered and was hidden in the mine to cover it up. Or the explanation could be very simple. He could have been mining salt and was just at the wrong place at the wrong time and experienced a cave-in. If I had to make a guess, Based on what little information we have, I would say I lean more towards murder. But then again, it doesn't really matter, as we'll never truly know. This mummy is on display in the National Museum of Iran. Next would be Salt Man number 2. This mummy was carbon dated to around 1550 years ago, which also puts him in the Sassanian era. This mummy is on display in the Zanjan Museum. Salt Man numbers 3, 4, and 5 were all placed in the Achaemenian period. Basically, the Persian Empire is split into multiple dynasties. The Achaemenian dynasty was the first, and the Sassanian dynasty followed afterward. Saltman number three was carbon dated to around 2,337 years ago. The fourth mummy was placed around 2,301 years ago, and the fifth was placed around 2,286 years ago. Here is a picture of Saltman number three. As you can see, he is in poor condition. Now to change things up a bit, let's talk about the fifth saltman, because saltman number four is the most preserved of the five, so I will leave that mummy for last. For saltman number five, I could not find any pictures of this mummy on the internet, but that doesn't mean it isn't significant. Studies of the remains found tapeworm eggs inside the body. One of the ways to get this type of tapeworm would be to eat raw or undercooked meat. What makes this find so interesting is that this is the first example of this tapeworm in ancient Iran, and the earliest case of any intestinal parasites in the region. Lastly, we have Saltman number 4. This is considered the most preserved of all the mummies found. One look at this mummy says a lot. We are looking at his last moments alive, which is quite terrifying. The mummy was around the age of 16 before he died, and just like the other saltmen, the cause of death is likely due to a cave-in. Now that we learned a bit about the saltmen, we can begin to construct a story on how they might have lived. As I said before, 
evidence has shown two distinct periods when the mine was used, the Achaemenian period and the Sassanian period. Isotopic analysis on the human remains gives us a good idea on where the miners came from. During the Achaemenian period, the mine was used from afar. Some of the miners were from northeastern Iran and around the coast of the Caspian Sea, and some were even as far as Central Asia. The high quantity of ceramic vessels and the type of goods supplied also points to the mine being accessed from a faraway place. The Sassanian period is quite different. Some of the miners found were from the Tehran Kazvin Plain, which is pretty close to the mine. Based on animal bones found near the saltmen, it shows that the ancient miners might have eaten farm animals such as goats, sheep, and possibly pigs and cattle. The animals would be a good source of food for the foreign miners, as the animals could be brought with them. Research has found cultivated plants that were eaten. This shows that some of the miners were growing crops and meant they had a settlement close by. Even though there is evidence to show a settlement in the area of the mine, it is still lacking. This could show that the mining activity was seasonal. This is the opposite of let's say the Greek mining method, as they were often mined by slaves and the effort was well organized. Based on the numerous fabrics and materials, such as leather, we can analyze the color, the cloth type, and the patterns of the weaving and thickness of the fibers to further distinguish between the two mining periods. The artifacts found can also show the differences between the two periods in history. The study of the Iranian salt mummies is a big deal as many of the so-called Persian mummies are fakes. So this is an opportunity of a lifetime. But having said that, there were some problems while handling the mummies. At one point the salt men were not properly sealed, which allowed air to get through the gaps. Bacteria formed and did some damage to some of the mummy's internal organs. Luckily. Everything is now under control, but this small mistake cost the Zanjan Museum three custom-made cases of $25,000 each, with monitors built in so they can keep the mummies in good condition. It is just to show that finding mummies and historical artifacts is just one of the steps. The next step would be to make them last. The Iranian salt men are an amazing discovery that has shed some light into what ancient mining was like, as well as the dangers that came with it. It makes you wonder how many more mummies are still waiting to be found. Thanks for watching. What do you guys think about the Iranian salt mummies? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank everyone for reaching 2000 plus subscribers. I honestly never thought I would get this far, so thank you. If you liked the video, leave a like. It greatly helps me out. If you haven't already, subscribe for more history content. I am thinking of doing my next topic on Stonehenge, the ancient historical site, but I am open to doing any Halloween themed topics. So let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video.